What really hurt the most was watching her get ready for her night. After she put on her sexy lingerie and stockings, I watched as she spent a lot of time putting on makeup and fixing her hair. Then my wife put on a sexy dress that I had never seen before. Then high heels appeared and her entire outfit was unfamiliar to me. I felt betrayal, jealousy, and anger well up deep within me. She did all this for Mark Diamond, her boss, not for me. She was making herself desirable and sexy to another man. Outside of our marriage, while I was busting my ass to provide her with a wonderful life and family. All this was incomprehensible. Our sex life was amazing. Jessica was always attentive and never hid anything. She always made me feel loved, so there was no reason not to trust her. After 20 years of marriage, I knew her and never thought that she could cheat on our marriage. Except for that one night a month ago at her company's dinner, when her boss, Mark Diamond, managing partner of the law firm, paid more attention to Jessica than I wanted. And there was a smirk that I caught when he looked at me after dancing with my wife, who gave me a hint. For some reason, I had a bad feeling that was bothering me, and it got much worse when I told Jessica about it the next day. The way she stood up for him and tried to make me feel like I was overreacting confirmed my suspicions. Too many late meetings and missed lunches suddenly register as a red flag that I need to address immediately. The more I thought, the more furious I became. Jessica is Mark's personal assistant. Mark is the managing partner of a prestigious law firm. He is one of those guys who loves to flaunt his success with expensive cars, jewelry, a luxurious lifestyle, and his young trophy wife, Stella. She was a young, 30-year-old, extremely sexy girl for whom he exchanged his ex-wife of 20 years. Mark likes to make jokes at other people's expense, and I remember him making fun of my work on one of our walks. You see, I sell screws and fasteners to large retail stores. It's not a glamorous job, but I made over $200,000 a year, which provided a good living for my family. I gave Jessica everything she wanted and was able to pay for our daughter Sarah's college education. She was now in her second year. We also live in a pleasant community with good friends and a comfortable lifestyle. Of course, I wasn't a power broker and I didn't make a million a year like Mark, but we were happy. At least that's what I thought. Anyway, the night he decided to mock my work in front of my wife and others, I was pissed off not only because he was an arrogant asshole, but also because of the way my wife defended him after I was pissed off about being humiliated in front of her and others. So, Johnny, how's it going with the nuts and bolts? It must be fun working at Home Depot every day. When I saw Jessica laughing, my blood boiled and I left without saying a word. To her credit, Jessica came over and asked me what was wrong. When I told her this, she tried to make light of it. Oh, baby, he's just kidding. He loves to have fun. You shouldn't take everything so personally. Come with me. He's a really good guy. Against my better judgment, I stayed at dinner for the rest of the evening. Looking back, I realize I should have seen the signs. But now I realize I may have missed some red flags. Damn it, I'm not a fool and I wouldn't sit quietly. I can understand other people's attraction to Mark. He's the alpha, the big, strong, good-looking man, the wealthy partner of the firm, the one everyone wants to be around. And Jessica was his closest ally at the firm, his valued and trusted right hand. Everything was going well. It didn't matter that he had a younger, sexier wife. For an asshole like Mark, he wanted it all. And laying claim to someone else's wife was definitely on his list. Well, over the next week I acted quickly to find out if I was crazy or if my intuition was correct. After six audio recording devices and five video cameras arrived, I began to implement my plan of action. The first video camera was installed in the smoke detector on the ceiling of our bedroom. The next two cameras were placed at different angles of the bedroom to capture the full view. I placed the rest in the master bathroom and living room. All of the camcorders had live streaming capability, up to 8K, recording and wireless connectivity to a dedicated computer I set up in the attic, all remotely controlled via a phone app. Besides the video, the audio devices were unique. One of the audio devices was encased in a pen, which I placed next to the kitchen phone, and the other I discreetly placed in her car. I put other standard recording devices in her three favorite purses and one behind our bed. With this overlay, I should be able to capture at least 90% of her conversations 
and any activity in the house. I had a bad feeling about the next week as I got ready to travel on business. As always, Jessica was loving and rocked my world in bed, just like every time I went on a trip. She always started with lots of kisses and sweet talk, telling me how much she loved me and wanted me. Her closeness and love were something I always treasured and she never let me down. I love you so much, and I love making love to you, honey. With tears in her eyes, she looked at me, smiling, and said, I love you too, baby. You are amazing, and I will love you forever. It was an amazing night, and I felt so close and in love with this woman that I knew there was no way she could be unfaithful, and I almost gave up on my spying plan. Luckily, I left everything as it was and set out on my two-night trip this week. I wanted to give her enough time in case something happened. We kissed goodbye, and by 6 p.m. I was on my way for the three-hour drive to the hotel. The trip allowed me to replay the last six months of trying to find something else to do. But other than two scenes with her boss, that smirk and his attempt to humiliate me, nothing changed, and a smile appeared on my face when I realized that I was being stupid and paranoid. When I finally arrived at the hotel, I checked into my room and turned on my laptop, relaxing on the king-size bed. This took a few minutes and I checked my email for any work messages and then clicked on the link to the server in my attic to view the last three hours. I knew there wouldn't be much to see, but I needed to test the remote access system. I played the video at 3x speed until I saw my wife in the bedroom and then returned it to normal speed to enjoy watching my beautiful, sexy wife making a phone call. What I didn't expect was the phone conversation with Mark an hour after I left. The video camera captured the audio as I watched her lying on the bed, talking to her boss. I could only hear her part of the conversation as I watched and listened to the videotape. Hello, honey. He left, and I'm all alone. Yes, this time for two nights. When can you come? Won't your wife ask where you're going? Oh my God, this is great. Can you spend the night with me? I really want to wake up next to you. Oh yes, of course. I'm all yours, baby. Then what time will you be here? Okay, see you soon. I love you, baby. I sat there in shock. We just made the most passionate love. She came at least four times and told me that she loved me. Now, an hour later, she invites him to spend the night with her. Who was this woman? How can she love me so much and betray me moments later? Is he coming tonight? For the next hour, I watched my loving wife prepare to meet her lover. Watching her shower, put on sexy lingerie, high heels and makeup, after spending 30 minutes fixing her hair, was an incredibly painful and erotic sight. I always knew she was a sexual being, and when she dressed like that, she was a vixen. The problem was that she never dressed like that for me. Anger and jealousy raged in my blood when I realized that she was doing all this for Mark and not for her faithful husband. It was all too hard for me to believe. Did Mark really come over tonight or was it just a misunderstanding? That last question was answered a few minutes later when the doorbell rang and I saw Mark walk into my house and kiss Jessica deeply in front of the video camera in real time. I took a close-up of their kiss which made me throw up for the first time that night. Wow, baby. You look amazing in that dress. I can't wait to rip it off your sexy body and make love to you all night long, he said, looking over at Jessica with a wide smile. The exchange between them made me angry, but that anger turned into incredible pain when I saw her take his hand and lead him into our bedroom. The pain got worse as I watched her undress him, and he stood there with that stupid smile on his face. He was a big man with a strong body and six-pack abs, I watched this with jealousy, rage, and anger, but at the same time I was somehow impressed by this asshole. After the second bout of vomiting, I watched and listened to them have sex for the next hour. Obviously, I knew my marriage was over and I shouldn't have let it bother me, but their conversation was the most painful part of the night. He started the conversation as they lay together in each other's arms. So, your husband is gone for a few nights? Okay. You'll be mine for the next two days. I'm so happy you can stay the night, baby. You know, I wanted to wake up next to you for so long. I love being with you, Mark. 
Yes, I will love taking you over and over again all night long while hubby works his ass. What an idiot. Be good, Mark. I love him, and he is a good person. Then why do you let me have sex with you? Mark, you are the sexiest man I know, and I love our sex. But we are both married, and we should just enjoy the time we have together. It makes sense. You give me more love and affection than my wife or any other woman I have been with. For me, it's more than sex. I just love the way you make me feel, Jessica. This part really hurt because the love he was talking about was supposed to be just for me. But now I realize that she shared her love with another man. I continued to listen and watch as they hugged, kissed, and talked. Does your husband satisfy you as much as I do, Jessica? He's a wonderful lover, but no, he's not like you. You do things to me that I can't explain. I sat there sad, hurt, with a deep sense of loss. I turned off the computer and could no longer listen to this betrayal in my home and bed. After several hours of insomnia and struggling with my anger, I realized that there would be a lot of pain and revenge in my future. When I returned home, everything was fine. Complete love and respect, as if nothing had happened. Jessica greeted me with a big hug and lots of kisses. She acted as usual, as if nothing had happened while I was gone. Instead of the love I had always felt for her, I now felt disgust and shuddered at her kiss. I did a great job as an actor and acted as normal as possible. I collected all the recordings and videos together, made copies to the cloud as a backup, and created an encrypted file on my computer. Over the next two weeks, I made sure every second Jessica spent with me counted. I kept her, busy, and didn't give them any opportunity for quickies or late-night sex. She even asked me when my next trip was planned. They clearly wanted me to leave, and one morning I overheard their conversation while she was driving to work. When will your husband leave town again? I'm not sure, but I'll find out. It's gotta happen soon, baby. Knowing this, I planned the trip for one night to make sure he would come while I was gone. The plan was taking shape. That same evening, while I was watching a movie on TV, my cheating wife asked, Darling, when is your next trip? I tried to control my anger and replied, Honey, are you trying to get rid of me? Do you have a secret lover who comes when I'm not there? I said in a joking voice. She didn't lose her rhythm and didn't show any signs of guilt. Do not be silly. I like it when you're home. I hope you don't have to leave, and I'm wondering if your travel has been cut back. No, sorry, honey. My job still requires me to travel. Yes, I have an evening appointment next Tuesday, and I'll be back sometime on Wednesday. She said in a convincing tone, I hate it when you leave. I wish you didn't have to travel like that. I miss you so much when you're gone. Then she came over, hugged me, kissed me deeply, and made me feel more love than I can explain. When I realized that she was giving the same love to another man, I wanted to scream and throw her to the floor, but I kept my appearance and continued to work as usual, knowing that next week my plan would be put into action. On Tuesday I packed up for the trip, and Jessica and I had our last session of lovemaking. After tonight there will be no more us. She kissed me wonderfully before I left that night, and I wondered if she had seen the sadness in my eyes when I looked at her one last time. I saw her expression change, and I wasn't sure what she was thinking. Instead of leaving town, I returned to my office and parked my car. I then returned to my desk to work late, which was not unusual, and the few people who were there never questioned my arrival. At approximately 7.30, the video camera turned on as Mark entered my house and tenderly kissed my soon-to-be ex-wife again. It was showtime. Disabling video camera using a phone app, I put my cell phone in a drawer because I didn't want the GPS to follow me during my trip. I quietly left the office, went to the trunk of my car, and took out a folding electric bike. The electric motor allowed it to reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour and a range of up to 50 miles on a single charge. I put on a black hoodie, looked around to make sure no one had noticed, and went on a 12-mile trip back to your home. My idea for the bike was stealth. This allowed me to return home quietly and unnoticed within 20 minutes. 
I parked my bike behind the house and walked through the back sliding door, which I had set to stay open. Once inside, I stood quietly to make sure I wasn't discovered and listened for sounds coming from the bedroom. After I was sure that they were going to do this and my arrival was not revealed, I went to the closet where I had put the short-barreled shotgun and aluminum bat and carried them into the bedroom. I carefully placed the shotgun along the wall outside the bedroom, picked up the bat, and quietly opened the door to the candlelit room. Because they made so much noise, they didn't hear a sound or see a shadow when I walked the short distance to the bed. I didn't hesitate and delivered a strong blow to the side of his head. The dull sound of metal hitting flesh was drowned out only by the sound of the 250-pound beast hitting the floor. While he was going down to the floor, I grabbed the shotgun and turned on the light. Then Jessica realized what was happening. Looks like stunned and in shock, she screamed, Oh God, no, please no. This can't be true. Why are you here? You should be away. Why are you with another man in my bed? That's a better question. Now shut the fuck up and pay attention. The big man was semi-conscious and now sat against the wall, with blood dripping from a six-inch wound caused by a metal bat. I watched him as he regained consciousness and noticed an angry man in front of me. Damn it, this hurts. Why did you do that, dude? Are you kidding? You have sex with my wife in my bed and you think I won't react? What are you going to do? He asked, clearly nervous, looking at the shotgun I was pointing at him. Are you worried, big man? Are you afraid that I will hurt you? I know what you two did behind my back, and today is payback. I'm going to kill you, Mark. Tonight you will die, teased I. I continued, everything you worked for will disappear. I hope it was worth it, asshole. Dude, if you kill me, you're going to jail for the rest of your life. To hell with this. We will all die tonight. How does that sound, idiot? I wanted to put the fear of God into both of them, and of course I had no plans to kill anyone, but it was nice to see how scared they were. I behaved excitedly, scaring them both. Jessica was crying, curled up and trying to cover her naked body with a sheet. Baby, please don't do anything stupid. I love you, I really do. Put the shotgun down and let's talk about this. With an evil grin, I pointed the shotgun at her. Shut the fuck up. This is because you wanted adventures outside of our marriage. Whatever happens tonight is all your work. They knew they were in trouble and knew they had to calm me down or I would kill everyone. The custom-made loads in the shotgun consisted of 25% salt and 75% capsicum oleoresin, which was used in pepper spray. I didn't intend to kill anyone, but rather to cause him enough pain and maybe a little damage to his genitals to last him a lifetime. I didn't intend to go to jail, and I won't kill anyone today. But since no one knew this, I wanted to seriously scare them, so that these emotions would last a long time and they would never forget this night. After Big Mark recovered from the blow to the head, he became bolder and decided to rush at me and try to disarm me, and I was waiting for this to happen. As soon as he made his move, he exposed himself, and I unloaded the first round. The explosion was loud, but his screams were even louder. He couldn't see or breathe without suffocating, and the pain was unlike anything he'd ever experienced. A few minutes later, as he sat there, writhing in pain and bleeding, I explained how it would work. I gave the big man a kick to get his attention, all the while looking at my soon-to-be ex-wife. Listen to me, and you too, my cheating wife. I'll leave in a few minutes, and you take this loser to the emergency room before he bleeds out. You won't call 911, but you will take him in your car to the hospital. You won't tell anyone how this happened or that I was involved in it. In fact, you'll tell anyone who asks that I had no idea about your affair. If any of you tell them that I was involved or knew about your adultery, then the video, audio, and photos that I collected will go to the asshole's wife and partners at the firm. Plus, everyone you know will be sent a link to a website I created with over two hours of your sex scenes. I don't care what lies you come up with for the police, but you won't mention my name, and you'll insist that I know nothing about anything related to this. You won't fire my ex-wife. She will need this job as soon as the divorce is final. 
If you come after me or she refuses the divorce proposal, everything will come out. At this point, it won't matter who gets burned. Get him to the hospital before he bleeds and remember what I said. I left the same way I came in, fixing the lock and closing the door. I put the bat and shotgun in the bat bag and slung it over my shoulder. I quietly and quietly headed out of the area. While riding my bike back to my office, I threw the bat and shotgun into different parts of the river. I then took off the surgical gloves I was wearing and threw them away before returning. Back at my office, I put the bike back in the car and was back at my desk by 9 e -E -E. I then went on my trip, saying goodbye to some IT employees who were working late. As far as anyone knew, my car never left the lot, and I sat at my desk all evening. It would be their word against mine, with no evidence if they ever accused me. Mark underwent surgery. He had to shave his head to get 18 stitches because he suffered a concussion from the blow. The story he told was that the last thing he remembered was walking home to his personal assistant with some paperwork and then ending up in the hospital. He told police he didn't remember seeing anyone or being hit. He kept his mouth shut, knowing that I could ruin his life and career. Jessica was beside herself and did not say a word about this incident. All she said was that she heard a gunshot, and when she went outside, she saw Mark lying there and she took him to the hospital because she didn't think there was time to wait for an ambulance. Neither could explain why he was naked, and both stuck to their stories. But Mark's wife didn't believe him, which soon became a big problem for Mark. I spent the afternoon removing the surveillance equipment, uploaded everything to an encrypted cloud server, and threw the equipment away. Any remaining evidence that I knew about their affair was now out of reach in the cloud. Jessica came in around 6 p.m. and found me in the living room with a bottle of my good whiskey in my hands. I sat quietly while she sat across from me on the couch. She looked broken and sad. I had never seen her like this, and for a brief second, I felt sorry for her. With tears in her eyes, she could not stand it and tried to explain everything. Johnny, I know what you saw was bad, but what you need to know is that I wasn't in love with him. I know what it looked like and what I said, and it must have hurt, but you know me, and after sex, I need connection. I said it all to you in my heart. It was all for you, baby. Whenever you left, I hated being alone, and Mark would keep me company. And yes, it got sexual, but it was just sex. You have to believe me. My mouth was wide open in amazement at the incomprehensible excuse she made. Jessica, I listened to your explanations, and although you said that these words of love were addressed to me, I cannot help but believe that they were addressed to Mark. It's over, Jessica. Twenty wonderful years thrown away because of your boss and your adultery. We will both have to live with your actions for the rest of our lives. Thank you for the pain and suffering you caused me. I will always cherish it, I said sarcastically. What do we do now? She asked, and tears streamed down her face. Well, we're done with you. I will never understand how you did what you did to me, or why. I'll have to live with this forever. There's no way I can forgive what you did, but I will keep my promise and not reveal your infidelity. Sarah and your parents will never know that they have such a woman instead of mother and daughter. I'll let you explain why we're getting a divorce, but I warn you, don't make me the bad guy. If you do this, it will end badly, because I will make sure everyone knows that you are nothing more than a cheating adulteress. I'm putting the house up for sale, and in the meantime, you need to find a place to stay. Since you ruined everything, you need to move out. I'm not asking. This is what you will do. Let me know where to send the divorce papers. Sign the papers and don't resist the divorce. Otherwise, it will be painful for you and your boyfriend. Crying into her hands, she tried to speak. He's not my boyfriend, and I don't love him. Can't we figure this out? Is there anything we can do? I know it's too late after what I did but I can't live without you and I'll do anything to keep us together. I never wanted to lose you. Please do not leave me. You know, Jessica, if it had only been about sex, there might have been a way to get back through counseling or separation. But what really ended my love for you was that you shared a love with him that was just for me. The words you said to him killed us and everything I ever felt for you. No, I will never forget or forgive your betrayal. 
and I will never want to see or talk to you again. Once the divorce is final, you will disappear from my life forever. After several hours begged for giving her, she left the next morning and stayed with her mom and dad until the house was sold. Over the next week, the police questioned me and tried to get me to admit my involvement. I hired a lawyer and we told them that unless they provided some evidence of my involvement, I would no longer answer questions without a warrant. Since there was no evidence and I had an alibi, they left me alone. The incident was ultimately reported as a random burglary and assault. Jessica and her family called and begged me to reconsider. I was told that she loves me and cannot live without me. She's sorry. Please forgive her. Please sort it out, counseling, blah, blah, blah. I stopped answering their calls and didn't open the door when they came in. I changed my phone number and never spoke to any of them again. Yes, the loss killed me. Every second of separation was painful, but the memory of her betrayal and how she gave her love to another man was something that I could not come to terms with. Now Jessica was a 42-year-old single mother who lived on her salary in a one-bedroom apartment. The pleasant life she enjoyed was gone. Her daughter and family had it all figured out and were unhappy with Jessica and her choices. They blamed her for the failed marriage. Jessica was now alone, as Mark was more interested in saving his own marriage. Mark treated her poorly at work and blamed her for his physical and marital problems. He could no longer work with her and transferred her to the administrative area with the same pay. Her new job was tedious and boring, and she no longer had the prestigious position to work with one of the partners. Word got around that she was one of Mark's ex-girlfriends and she was treated as such. Now, with a job she hated, no prospects for promotion, no friends, no husband, and no family who blamed her for the divorce, she sank into depression. She cried every night alone and I missed you by Johnny with every fiber of his being. Her heart ached almost all the time and she constantly thought about her actions and her loss. Sarah tried to help her mother, but there seemed to be no turning back, and she watched her lose weight. Jessica ate poorly and drank a lot every evening. She refused to take care of herself, saying that without Johnny, she had no reason to worry anymore. When Sarah turned to her father for advice, he sympathized with her situation, but was never able to come to terms with the betrayal and never spoke to Jessica again. Stella really pulled it all together and made Mark's life a living hell. She forced him to move into one of the guest rooms, and he paid dearly for his infidelity. Stella eventually began dating several younger men and kept Mark around to pay all the bills. She agreed to be by his side like E. Candy at corporate events or business meetings, but they lived separate lives. Mark will never have sex again, and he will never have a woman he loves. For the rest of his life, he will remember how and when his whole life changed, and all because of his desire to take someone else's wife. His anger towards me was epic, and he wanted to hurt me in the worst possible way, but nothing happened for months. Later that year, I was with my workmates for a drink when I was attacked and beaten outside the bar until my mates came out to help. The attackers left before the police arrived, and I spent two days in the hospital with broken ribs and 20 stitches. I believe they wanted me dead, and if it weren't for my friends, I think they would have succeeded. I knew that this was revenge for Mark, and I was not at all surprised. Six weeks later, I felt much better and called Mark's office. Mr. Diamond, please, I said to his secretary. Sorry, he's at a meeting. Can I accept the message? Yes, please tell him to meet me at one o'clock this Friday at the French Deli across the street. I'm sorry, sir. I don't make appointments with Mr. Diamond. Just give him a message. Write it down. Friday, 1 p.m., French Deli. Be there alone. Johnny, just give it to him and he will understand what it means. Thank you. I was sitting at the table facing the door when the asshole walked in alone. He saw me and came to the table. Sit down, I said. What do you want? I ignored his outburst and said, Thank you for coming today. Your people did a good job with me, but unfortunately for you, they didn't follow through. Because you did not heed my warning of any revenge against me or my family, you forced me to act. I handed him a folded piece of paper and said, 
Here is a link to a website that is currently created just for you, asshole. Don't bother trying to shut it down, as it operates from Syria with three backup servers in different locations. It is untraceable. I mean, you're screwed. Check it out when you get back to your office. I erased Jessica's face because she shouldn't have to pay for your sins. She's already suffered enough. Now, after you look at the website, I want you to think about how your firm will perceive your actions, how your wife will react, how your children, friends, and family will feel after watching a two-hour sex video. I plan to post it on several popular porn sites along with your name, profession, address, and phone number. His anger grew. Look, you've already ruined my life, and I'll never be the same sexually again. Just stop it, or I promise you we'll disappear. That's why we're here today, Mr. Diamond. I want to put an end to this. You took away from me the most precious thing in my life, my wife. You've ruined our 20-year marriage, and I can't let you go free. I risk being killed, as you put it, but I intend to avenge the beating your people gave me. Okay, calm down. What do you want? Two things that are not subject to discussion. You will stop any retaliation against me or anyone I know, including Jessica. You will deposit $1 million into this account by the end of the day on Friday. If the funds are not in the account by 9 p.m. on Friday, I will take action. I know what you're worth, and I also know what I can get in a lawsuit, so this paltry amount I'm asking should be considered a gift. If I agree, how do I know that you still won't destroy me? I am a man of my word, and you will have to trust me. I will say this. If you don't do this, then there is a 100% chance that this site will become famous by Saturday morning. I hope you suffer for the rest of your life for what you did to my happy marriage. The money was transferred. We sold the house and divided the property. Jessica had enough money to live a comfortable life if she continued to work or found another husband. Mark kept her working as part of our deal, but they were never close again. Jessica never remarried, rarely dated, and lived with the pain she caused both men. She had lost her marriage and the love of the man she wanted to be with for the rest of her life, and now found herself alone and depressed. She died before her 50th birthday, a broken, sad woman. Only her daughter, Sarah, was present at the ceremony to scatter the ashes. Joni continued to work for several more years and read a read to a small town on the Ocean. He married a nice woman who liked him mentally and sexually, but he could never replace the special love that only Jessica could give him. He never spoke to her again and only heard about her from Sarah, whom he adored. They talked every day and remained close, but Sarah rarely mentioned her mother because she knew her father still loved her and did not want to awaken his pain. Jessica's death saddened him, but it also brought final relief to the deep sadness he had kept locked away. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.